first step of what we're going to do now that we're going to get ready to do the lathing and the insulation is to prep the concrete pad for the nose stand to have uh, masonry screws inserted to hold the lath. Uh, he's going to demonstrate screwing using a concrete drill, uh, drilling a hole into the base of the pad. Okay. These holes will be about six inches apart all the way around the base. You need to be careful about spalling. You don't want the concrete to spread and split and impact its integrity. What we're doing now is we're not cutting all the way through the insulation blanket. We're just thinning the uh, dimension a little bit, taking a layer off so that we can transition the front end of the oven so that this insulation is not sticking out a lot. If you notice the strips that he's cutting now, go ahead. What he's doing is he's cutting strips that can be used to shape the top of the dome. This is on our Primavera oven and allows us to create the igloo shape that you see on the website. Now the size that you cut really is going to depend on what you want to create as far as your shape using either the Giardino or the Costa Cut. The thing we're doing here is we're now shaping the front landing of the dome with the strips that he cut based on the shape that he wants to do. Do the dome shaping around the front oven landing first, and then we do the dome shape. fitting so that you're not getting it slightly thicker in some areas and slightly thinner in others. Showing you right now is how he overlapped the piece in a slightly triangular cut so he gets the fit. Should give you a better angle. If you notice when it pulls it away, see how it's fitting. That blank space you see, he'll actually fill in with a small strip of insulation in order to get it so that it's even all the way around the dome. All right, the first layer is complete on the dome. Now he's going to do another pre-cut layer to create a second shaping layer of insulation. You're going to see that the dome is going to have more insulation than the side walls. That's mostly to create shape. Our commercial ovens do require more insulation at the dome than on the side walls, but our residential units require the same specification and thickness all the way around the dome. Any additional insulation will marginally help performance, but it's mostly about creating the shape that you want. Now that the two layers have been shaped to get you the first two layers of insulation, you'll notice that the front oven landing doesn't have the extra layer on it. That's because the heat isn't going to be as much of an issue in this area. Once he wraps the third layer around, you're going to achieve the three inches of insulation you need around the exterior dome. Also, you'll notice that it's a little bit bumpy here and there. That's not an issue. Once the lad's in place, you can compensate for that during the stucco layer to get it nice and even. The most important thing is to create the general shape that allows the lab to shape the oven and serve as a base to accept the stucco. This piece is pre-cut based on the measurements of the oven on the install. And if you notice, he's just wrapping the entire oven. Now, it's going to have difficulty staying in place until the lab is there, but we have the pre-drilled concrete holes to accept the lab. You'll see that step in a minute. Let's go. The next stage is to install the lath around the oven and then shape the insulation. The lath is going to mount 
into the concrete pad using masonry screws. Those are the holes that we pre-drilled in the beginning that are about six inches apart. Individual sections of lab are connected using wire ties. Now this process will be repeated all the way around the oven until the lab has been completely encircled the oven. We'll show you the front landing section so we can have a couple talking points on that when it gets there. The holes that he's drilling in the front face of the oven is to mount the lab so that you can get a fascia on the front of the oven as well with the stucco and paint. You don't need these holes if your intention is to install a brick arch or brick the oven in. But if you're going to use a stone fascia, if you're going to use a stucco fascia, then these holes will help you mount the lab. It's not going to damage the structure of the oven. We don't want to drill holes into the oven itself except in this front landing position. That's why the concrete pad is where you see the other holes. Now that the lab has been installed, we're doing the final shaping of the insulation to create the igloo dome shape. So he'll split the overlapping layers of blanket and then wrap it. So now that the oven has been shaped with the insulation, the next step is pulling the lab against the unit so that you can stucco it. Just like he did with the insulation, he's cutting sections of his lab so they can be bent and shaped to the oven. There will be some overlap, which is fine. The oven's now fully shaped. Final step is just make sure that you're shaping the lab around the exterior chimney so that when you mortar, you finalize it.